George Karloftis ended his 2022 season hot as anybody in the NFL with five and a half sacks over his last seven games of the season. Weeks 11 through 18, he had five and a half of those sacks. So how did he do that? What were they doing in Kansas City to get him back on the sack train? And how can his tape from last year point us in the right direction of how he's going to perform in 2023? That arrow's pointing up for George Karloftis. And that's what we're talking about today in the RGR Football Channel. My name is Daniel Harms, film analyst. And right now, that's how exactly how we want to start this out. With just as hot as George Karloftis finished his, his rookie season as the 30th pick for Kansas City last year in the first round. Let's talk a little bit about the stats from last year. He had 48 pressures on the season, those you know, six total sacks. And when I what I did is I went through his games last year. I charted six games from his 2022 season. But when I looked at the snap counts, I found some very interesting numbers. In weeks 1 through 10, he averaged 72 percent of the snaps overall in weeks 11 through 18 he averaged 55 percent of the snaps so when he was getting more of his snap his sacks he wasn't playing as much he was fresher he was able to be more effective as a pass rusher and like i said five and a half of his sacks came in those weeks 11 through 18 seven of his quarterback hits and 42 percent of his total pressures came during those seven weeks after the buying weeks 11 through 18 and when we look at conversion rates okay conversion rates are how often you're converting your pressures into sacks 28 percent of his pressures he converted into sacks in weeks 11 through 18 only compared to a 0.02 percent conversion rate for weeks 1 through 10. That tells me a lot about what he was able to do in the last half of the season. So let's get into his tape and let's look at what he was able to do. And like I said, I went through six games. I looked at the Colts, the Raiders. Those were two games that he played that were higher snaps. They were 80 plus percent of the snaps, if I'm not percent, if I'm not mistaken. Then I went into weeks 11 through 18. I looked at the Bengals, week 14 versus Denver, uh, Seattle, and the Rams. And what I did is I compiled what I call 1v1 true pass rush reps okay i converted all of those what i mean by true pass rush is that there's no play action there's no chipping there's no tight end chip releasing there's no running back coming out there isn't a double team it's just you one-on-one -on -one with a guard or a tackle wherever you're playing 30 percent of the time he was in those situations he had a win whether it was quick whether it was later he was converting he was converting those into wins 30 percent of the time essentially one out of every three times he was in a true pass rush rep for me he was winning so let's get into the tape break it down as we can see george karloff this here on the right side of the d or excuse me the right side of the offensive line going against braden smith against the colts a very very quick win here is able to get pressure on matt ryan help get that ball out quickly you want these kind of targets for a defense unfortunately you know Alec Pierce made a great play on the ball, but what, what I want you to notice about GK right here is that how he's going to win, okay? How quickly is he going to win? What's he doing here? He's going to win to the outside, but he's going to take steps with the offensive line. So they're they're sliding to the left. They're all 100% man slide to the left, and they're going to bring Jonathan Taylor out to take on the blitzer, and George Karloftis knows that that, D, that offensive line is shifting left so he's going to take some steps to the inside as well use that outside hand swim right around the tackle get free to matt ryan and force the ball to come out quickly unfortunately just uh, you know jalen watson was unable to get a pass breakup on that there was a nice delivered ball to alec pierce who comes down with it nearly gets an incompletion off it but that's what you want to see that's what you want to do and how you can convert a lot of those pressures that you're getting into uh incompletions and, and poor poor performances and poor throws so He's the working man's defensive end. We know the motor runs hot for George Karloftis. He's always working. He's trying everything he can to win. And sometimes he will get stuck. But here is a really good example of mixing in your pass rush moves and trying to do everything you can to win. So he's going to attack up the arc. For those of you that are new, one, make sure you're hitting that like and the bell and the sub to become one of us here at RGR. But I talk about threatening the arc and winning up the arc a lot. And what that means for me is I'm looking at right here, as the arc everything from you know this tackle is going to arc essentially outward is at a 45 degree angle most of the time and they want to win up the arc as a defensive end you want to threaten around the outside shoulder of that tackle to be able to make them overset to open up that b gap to the inside right here 
So you're going to see George Karloftis attack the arc. He's unable to win initially right there. He tries to go out and extend. You know, he sees the play action pass right there. He's trying to get around, sees that it's not happening. He tries to swim back over, spin around, and then he extends. This is the big part of his game that I want to see more of. A real true bull rush with two hands because the extension and the pop in his hands is true. It's real. Right here is a very, very good example of leverage, winning with leverage. He's using all these pass rush moves, and at the end of the day, he says, look, I'm a strong, powerful guy. I'm going to drive my legs forward, get my hands up underneath the shoulder pads of this tackle, move him into the pocket of the quarterback, and I'm going to disengage and I'm going to close on him because I'm strong. I know how to do this, and that's one of the most refined parts of his game. The being able to use that strength, that pop, that extension, those are things that he does very, very well. So I loved this pass rush rep because, yeah, again, it, it takes a little bit longer. It's a play-action pass. They're trying to hit a deep ball down the field anyway. It doesn't come to fruition, and George Kalantis is able to work to his bull rush and you know use that, that leverage, get underneath, and then win and close on the quarterback. This is a little bit of a, more of a showcasing of his eyes and eventual quickness because of his initial – Short area stop and start isn't great. You're going to see him, you know, try to get up the arc once again. Stop. Takes a little bit of time to get back to his right. He goes back around, dips the shoulder a little bit, closes on the quarterback. He's not really doing a ton of pass rush moves. He's more just kind of keeping an eye on Russell Wilson because we do know Russell Wilson wants to get out of the pocket at times. Later in the season, he was he was doing more of that. He was rushing more and being out, trying to get outside the pocket and get up and do everything he could. So good, patient eyes from George Karloftis here. Going up against Fleming, number 73, we see the, the big set here. So he's going to, again, try to work to the outside. Both of his hands are, are trying to get inside. I wish he would he would maybe try to extend a little bit more often and, and use the, that strength of his to be able to push these guys off of him. Keep the hands off. And that's the one thing where length can impact you as a pass rusher. If you're consistently being displaced, moved up and down the field by tackles, that, that length that he doesn't necessarily have a ton of, can impact you but again good job going back forth right left to be able to make an impact on the passing game here to get past a, a kind of a, a slower footed of uh, Fleming at right tackle so able to close right there this is one of the areas of concern that I do have for George Karloff this he's right here in a five-man front against two tight ends for the Seattle Seahawks and that means that, you know, Willie Gay's coming down here. And what and you have five men down the line because there's two tight ends. So Leo Chanel moves into this more of the middle linebacker along with Nick Bolton. And Karloftis is here. He's not going to get blocked at all. He's going to come down the line. They don't want to block him. He's like the they're just trying to get the ball to the outside. He's not in their minds as someone who can make a play on the football here. And he's able to to get there, but he falls off the block. He or falls off the tackle, excuse me. He had the third most missed tackles on the Chiefs last year. Now, missed tackles are really more of a year-to-year -year thing. They don't necessarily always carry over, but poor technique and grip strength can lead to lots of missed tackles. More lunging can lead to missed tackles. And that's one thing I did notice from Karlathis is he's, he likes to lunge. He leaves his feet quite a bit. And the attack angles, the tackle ang angles aren't always there. He misjudges speed of players quite a lot and again there's that length he doesn't have the grip strength that you see of a nick bolton who can stop on a dime and redirect power and his speed power downhill to stop his feet and get into you know one of the tackles or one of the uh the wide receivers tight ends or running backs you don't see that a lot from carl out being able to stop and get going the angle where he needs to just keep going down the line just keep going run 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 run, run. he stops he stops yeah he's trying to make sure geno smith doesn't run with that football but you have other people on the outside to help like you see that ball is there attack grip bring him down i'd like to see him stop falling off blocks oh so much but we don't always get what we want you know the old song you can't always get what you want that's just kind of how it works right we just we don't always get that way but hopefully he gets better at the uh at tackling in the nfl going forward we're going to see him a little bit more in the run game here where he's being stressed laterally okay that's where his his big weakness in the run game is, in my opinion. When you see running uh, running games trying to stretch horizontally off the opposite sides of the field, whether it's outside zone, whether it's just a pitch, and you can see a tackle get inside Karloff. This who I think his core strength and his leverage understanding still are a work in progress. And what I mean by leverage understanding is we saw earlier against these same Raiders. Him come in with that leverage after he got underneath the tackle, okay? 
and then he extended using that those arms to forklift underneath that works that is a two-way street because tackles will do the same thing you're going to see here he's going to get a little bit forklift underneath 72 is going to put his arms underneath Karloftis, and he's going to do two things at the same time lift and turn and this is how Karloftis can kind gets kind of bullied at times at the um, offensive line. He's a very good vertical run defender, meaning up and down. He comes downhill quickly. He doesn't get moved backward a ton, but he can get pushed out of the way or torqued out of the way. What I mean by torqued is when you just imagine, <clears throat> imagine an offensive lineman and a defensive end straight up shoulder to shoulder. And you see an offensive, the tackle grab him by the shoulder pads and turn his torso to the right or to the left. That's what I mean by torque. Cause it's all just, core strength and rotational body movement and he can get rotated out of the way just like that and get moved down a line um pretty quickly that's one of the weaknesses that i did see from his run game and why his run grade or his run defense wasn't what i expected it to be this year because we did see more of him getting turned off the line of scrimmage he does a better job here of getting his hand inside and trying to work minors or, or out of the way using that that inside hand to try to extend and set an edge well but we see here once again he does get moved down by quinn miners who's going to just kind of bully him right there and, it, and it's not so much a bully i don't know why i use the word bully but he, he does move him down the line but you see him trying he's working he's working he's trying to get inside the tackle but here's the the bigger problem that i have it's the pad level he does come up high in the run game quite a bit and that allows tackles and guards and whoever he's playing up against a block to get that leverage okay now this is where you do see him fighting and working i like this from him right here using that inside hand it's a little bit poorly located a little high on the shoulder pads if it's closer to this to the chest here you're going to see him not get pushed as much he doesn't get pushed as much you know in then in the next clip he does a really good job there but we're seeing the work in progress in that lateral run game he does force the running back back inside he's able to get him back to his his, his buddies there his the other, other defensive players but he's still moving down the line quite a bit it's a lot movement here we're going to see against the rams he's on the end by himself there isn't anybody else here there's nobody else blocking to the outside no one's blitzing up his end he's able to get a really nice job get inside get off the ball use his inside hand extend set that edge and force the running back inside where he's going to do the majority of his damage that's where you have to be able to consistently get off the ball right here boom inside he is already to the tackle when he's getting to his spot to jump out at him and then the extension look at the base from Karl Loftus. it's all good it's there the base is really the big thing for me you come in with better pad level he comes up underneath tries to push him out of the way but boom lowers those hips he drops the hips, extends, and he's in a really good position here. And the running back can't get outside. He can't really get up in here either. But that's neither here nor there. It's a good job from Carlotta there to really set that edge, set a hard edge, and flash to the outside and tell that running back, you're not getting out here. I will, I will get you. So that's what I want to see a little bit more from him in the run game. He's got the ability to get better at that. The strength is all there. Work on that core strength just a little bit so you don't get torqued out of the way nearly as much. The wins come from him in the pass rush. They do come. He's, like I said, 30% um, winning rate when he's in those 1v1 true pass rush sets that I, I've talked about. Um, but stop his feet on a dime and get up and corner and allow him to work with his hands to the outside and really dig in there and get downhill. Because that, like I said, that pass rush plan, uh, path movement will allow for quicker wins and allow him to get the get down the line so he doesn't always have to stop his feet and then transfer all of that movement that's going upfield down the line. You take that angle and you move it just to that, that little bit. You can do a lot of help for the defensive end in that regard. And speaking of help, he was a big help in the passes batted department for the Chiefs last year. He finished second to Carlos Dunlap. That's right. Carlos Dunlap had eight and he George Carlotas had seven. So what I want you to see here is the eye discipline from Carlotas. You're going to see... Right here, we have two guys coming out. I have a, a running back coming out here. So this tackle is trying to get out to me, all right? Going outside, that tight end. So he's got two things coming right at him. So Karloff, this understands. Okay, I'm going to come back to the inside because I really can't do much on the outside if this running back is going to chip me. But I know he's going out for a route, all right? So the ball is out now. Oof, that's terrible. Sorry, guys. 
the ball comes out and his eyes, his eyes are very, very good. That he keeps eyes on the ball, always looking for the football. That's what I love about Carl Loftus is that his eyes are really, really good in the pass rush department, in the run game, and in just like looking at this, just as, just as a passer, able to get that ball and spike it down in a, almost into the arms of Willie Gay Jr. Really, really fun. Really fun. So, again, hand-eye coordination really, really important. And he, that hand-eye coordination comes in handy and plays like this, where he's able to force an incompletion. He's able to force Russell Wilson out of the pocket, almost into the arms of Derek Nottie. Watch. On the end zone angle, here's we come around. He's unfortunately able to close for another sack, but you you get a pressure, you get a quarterback hit, and you force an incompletion. Watch the eyes here are going to tell him to go back to the inside based off what the tackle is doing. Look at that jump set, okay? That's a huge jump set. Creates a gigantic gap, the gigantic B gap. Also with a, a running back that's coming out of the backfield, he knows his pathway up the field a little bit limited. So instead, he's going to just come right back inside, win quickly with a little swipe right there, swim over, boom, closes. Look at that, he's unable to finish, but the eyes, eyes very, very, very quickly, he's able to adjust his, his pass rush route, his pass rush plan at the same time, and he's able to make it, you know, an incomplete pass there. So, all things considered, from George Karloftis, like, this is a guy who has, you know, he has some work to do, but there's clearly tools there to work with. And one of the things that we know from experience is that George Karloftis not only is a big worker, he's somebody that takes pride in what he does. You want to know how I know? Because he's been working with Tom Bahali in the offseason on his hand usage, getting better at this and trying to get quicker. And that's the big thing, is that he has the tools, the ability to use his hands. All of it's a little slow. And we know Tom is one of the best at hand at, with using his hands. So being able to see... Him work with Tom Bahali in the offseason to get better at his hand usage. It's going to help him in the run game. It's going to help him in the pass rush department. It's going to help him create more pressures, more sack opportunities, and be able to close on those. So I'm excited about the trajectory that we're seeing from George Karloftis because we know coming out, he was one of the hardest workers. He was always a go, 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 the high energy, high motor type guy. When you can combine that with a little bit more refined technique and the strength he already has we're talking about a guy who complements their new pass rush rookie and more designated pass rusher in Felix and DK Ozama very well with that power and we know that he's got more speed on the opposite side so you have that one two punch with speed with power and now you have a guy who's probably more confident this year than he was last year especially to start out with five and a half sacks in those last seven games he was finding that confidence and finding that stroke and finding his sack celebration, which is what we get to right now. Really, really fun to see a young player who, you know, isn't more of a, sh isn't really much of a showboating player, but he's confident now. He's more confident. He's going up against Abraham Lucas out of Western, uh, no, excuse me, not Western, a Washington State from a few years ago who was actually from last year. He was a rookie, if I'm not mistaken. Really, really high on, a lot of people really high on him, combining him with the, uh, the other rookie Charles Cross out of Ole Miss or excuse me Mississippi State I can't remember exactly which one there's so many uh tackles that have come out over the past couple of years but watch as he's going to beat quickly to the outside and then he's going to go to his which I think he should keep sack celebration I, I think he should keep this 100 it's fantastic but watch how he beats him he's going to set him up to the outside or excuse me um to the outside yes quickly wins and then as soon as he gets to the outside and gets those hands up, watch how quickly he takes them away. He's going to stab to the inside and watch Abraham Lucas. This is the part that I want to see more of. You see those hands, they come in, they're already bent, they're coming away. The lunge from the tackle, Karloftis sees it coming. He takes those hands away, boom, closes for the sack. So I'm excited of what he could possibly do next year. I do think that he's going to have a better year to start out next year than he did, um, you know, last year as a rookie he's got a much better foundation and i do think that he's going to be more of an integral rotational pass rusher and integral run def run defender this year so i think that you know i i did have a second round grade on him last year and I, I, we all knew he was gonna get drafted by the chiefs so again looking at the player that he is and predicting and projecting that to kansas city i think it makes a lot of sense he's going to be more of 
their focal player, focal point player on the defensive line going forward. Good player with Mike Dana, now with Felix Andiki Uzama and Charles Amenuhu to be able to round out the pass rush. So this should be one of the best defensive line groups and rotational ro- rotational groups they've had in Kansas City in a long time. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you're hitting that like, hit the bell, the sub, be a part of Rogue Nation. Again, go to the ch- go to the store to get all the, uh, the gear that we have consistently rolling out here at RGR. And you guys have yourselves a fantastic day, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR Football. Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR Football.